All right, we're going to be looking at section 2.1, and we're going to look at operations on vectors, and we're going to define something called linear combinations. So in terms of this lesson, we're going to be, first, I'll define some goals. Uh, we'll talk about what is a vector, how do you define a vector, and some notation. And then we're going to be looking at operations we can do. In particular, we're going to define two, uh, oper two basic operations, and then we're going to look at how we combine those things. And then the big thing for today is we're going to talk about linear combinations of vectors. That's going to be a formal definition, and this is something we're going to use throughout this course. So this is a really important idea, and we're just scratching the surface here. Okay, so uh, by the end of this, you should uh, know how to work with vectors, recognize what a vector is, you should be able to perform basic operations on vectors, at least the two fundamental operations we're going to define here, and be able to recognize and work with linear combination of vectors. So uh, vectors are one of these things that are used in a wide variety of fields, and different people have come up with these independently and have their own notation. So it's going to be very important that you be very flexible in how you react to things and recognize when things are vectors, even if they're described in different ways. So for example, if we're talking about a force, we might talk about the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. Uh, we may talk about uh, velocity as a vector, and we may do that in terms of components, right? So we may have two different directions, north and east, and give the components of the vector in those two different directions. Sometimes the direction is given to you in a way that's not always obvious. So for example, if we have a wire and we need to know uh, the direction, this is actually not uh, giving a specific direction. So we should actually have to know which direction it's going. So something like this. If you're going to use the BIOS of our law, you need to know which direction the current is going. So we have some magnitude and direction, and that's going to help us work with this thing. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes we just use the uh, vectors as a way to keep track of the state of some system. So for example, in biology, if you've got the population of several different species, we may use a vector to keep track of the numbers of each species. Sometimes you see this in chemistry. If you're going to keep track of the mass of different kind of compounds, they'll throw that in a vector and work for it from it for there. Okay, so all of these uh, different notations or different ways to describe vectors are important and you should be able to recognize them. Um, in terms of how do you think about this geometrically, you can think of a vector as something that has a start point, and we'll refer to that as the tail, and an end point and we'll refer to that as the head of the vector. So for example, if I give you two coordinates saying this is the tail and that's the head, so the tail is going to be at minus 2, 3, and the head is going to be at 3, minus 3, so this is going to define our vector like that. If we only give you one coordinate, then we're going to assume that the tail starts at the origin. So if you're just told this by itself, that means that the tail is going to be at the origin at 0, 0, and it's going to extend out to 3 minus 3. Okay. <clears throat> so again, there's a lot of different ways we can denote or describe a vector. So we can give it to you in terms of a length and a direction. Uh, we can give it to you in terms of the tail and the head, or just the head, and this is going to imply that the tail is at the origin. We can give it to you in terms of components. So for one example would be the i and j components and then include K for in 3D. In this class, this is going to be the method we're going to use the most. Um, so uh, this is what we'll see most often. As we go to higher dimensions, uh, this kind of notation is going to be easiest to use. Um, and what's important here is you recognize that all of these descriptions here are describing the exact same vector. In terms of notation, uh, oftentimes uh, books will use that, uh, they use a bold face, and this can be really hard to keep track of, so you have to be very careful when reading texts. Uh, in the notes here, we're going to use an arrow over the top of the character. This is going to denote a vector. Later on, we're going to see this notation. We're going to see a hat, 
And this is going to be special notation for a vector. And what this means is that the, the length of this vector is 1. Okay, so that's going to be important later on. We'll see that. Uh, so when you see all these things, you should recognize this as a vector. And whenever you see an expression, you should always stop and ask, what's a scalar value? What's a vector? And later on, when we see matrices, you should ask, what's a matrix? <coughs> okay, there, there's two fundamental operations that we're going to work with. Uh, first is going to be scalar multiplication, and the other is vector addition. For scalar multiplication, now the way this is worded is a little problematic. We should explicitly tell you uh, what each of these things is. So if I take a scalar number times a vector, basically what this is going to do is it's going to take this vector and change its length. If c is bigger than 1 or less than minus 1, it's going to make the vector longer or stretch it out. If c is between minus 1 and 1, then we're going to squeeze it in. If c is a positive number, then what we're going to do is the resulting vector is going to be going in the same direction. If c is negative, then the resulting vector will be flipped and going in the opposite direction. So as an example, <coughs> suppose I've got this vector 2 minus 1. If I multiply by 2, basically I'm going to stretch it out and go along this direction, and the result is going to be like that. If I take minus 2, I know that I'm going to stretch it out. So it's going to, but because it's a negative 2, I know it's going to be flipped all around in this direction. So it's in this, basically the opposite direction and twice as long. If I multiply by a half, right, I know it's going to still be in this direction, but it's going to be basically be half as long. So my result looks like that. And if I multiply by minus a half, I know I'm going to flip it in the opposite direction, and the uh, result is going to be half as long, so I get something like that. Okay. Second thing we're going to look at is vector addition. So basically with vector addition, I'm going to take each component and add each component. So the first, thing, first component is going to be the sum of the first components. Second component is going to be the sum of the second components. And I can extend this to three dimensions. And I'm just going to add component by component. Okay, and then I can do the same thing for four dimensions. So I just add the first two and the second and just keep going. So each component is the sum of the corresponding components, and I can go to five, six, whatever dimensions I need to go to. <clears throat> now graphically, how do we think about this? We can think of this as stacking the two, sorry about that, stacking the two vectors. So if I take u plus v, I start with u, start at the origin, or start wherever I'm going to go from, go head to tail, and then I take the tail of the V, and I put it at the head of the U, and extend that on. And now my resulting vector is going to be at, from the tail of the first vector, ending at the head of the second vector. And that's my result, like so. Um, it's not going to matter which order we do things. So if I switch this so that I've got uh, U plus V, and then I take V plus U, I'm going to end up in the exact same spot, like so. Oops, now before I do that, I want to just say one thing here. Um, the other thing to say is that notice that this forms a parallelogram. And later on, we're going to talk about the area of that parallelogram in terms of u and v. And that's something we'll see later. And when we talk about that, parallelogram, just think about that as switching the order of the sum of those two things. Okay, so uh, now that I've got these two operations, so I've got scalar multiplication, vector addition, I can try to combine these two things into one expression. So it's, instead of taking uh, 
3 times u, then taking minus 1 half times v, and then uh, adding the res results, I can express that in a single way. But it basically means exactly the same thing. It means first take the scalar multiplications. So I'm going to take that's going to be 6 minus 3. Then minus a half is going to be minus 2 minus 4. Now do the addition. And I get some result. Okay, so basically all I'm doing is I'm uh, taking the scalar multiplication, the vector addition, and using that to form a single expression, and it's combining those two operations. Uh, now notice that in doing that, I've essentially defined vector subtraction because instead of thinking of minus v, I can think of that as minus one times v. I get an expression like that. So now I can do a shortcut if I want to take u minus v. It's really just a linear combination. Sorry, I'm going to use that term later. But taking a combination of u and v where I just multiply this one by minus 1. So if I have u plus v, oops, I'm going to get something like this then u minus v is I'm going to basically take that second uh, vector and flip it around and my result is going to be like that. Okay, so, so that's another example. Uh, and we can pick whatever numbers we want here. So this is going to be 7 times u is going to be 14 minus 7. 2 times v is going to be 8, 16. So I'm going to have 22 9. Okay. So we can generalize this idea. Uh, so basically we've looked at scalar multiplication, which I think is straightforward. Vector addition, which is relatively straightforward. We combine those two things, which gets a little more complicated, but it's doable. Uh, unfortunately, that's not complicated enough. And by math department policy, we need to make this much more compl complicated. Uh, so we're going to generalize this idea. And the idea is this. If I have a bunch of scalar numbers, so these are just single numbers, and I've got some corresponding vectors. If I want to take, so what we've done up to now is we've just looked at taking two of those vectors and multiplying them and adding. I can do this in general for any number. Right? And the notation that we're going to use for this is going to be along these lines. And if I take something like this, this is a linear combination. And we're going to spend a lot of time in this course talking about linear combinations and what this means. So it's really important for you to get this down now. So I highly recommend that you go in your book and look at that, and then look at some of the examples that are in your book, especially on the web pages. So there's some really nice examples to get these ideas. So we're just touching the surface here. Um, so what we've done so far is done something like this. If I just take a scalar times this vector plus a scalar times ve this vector, this is a linear combination of these two vectors. Uh, and what we're asking now is what if we make this a little different? If we extend this out, then what happens? This comes out a little further. We're going to make this a little longer. And then our new sum is going to look like this. So. We're, we started there, and now with that change, we're going to be there. And we can ask all kinds of questions. We can ask questions like, if I'm up here, is it possible for me to find a number here and a number here so that I end up over there? Okay. Sometimes that's going to be possible. Sometimes it's not. So an important question is, is can this be done? So in general, we're going to have something like this. We're going to have a couple vectors, and we're going to ask, what is the set of all possible linear combinations? Right, we'll talk about that later, but this is kind of a, a preview of what's to come. We're going to ask, what vectors can I actually express like this? So what are the, what are the possible vectors I could put here and get something that makes sense? Uh, so if I look at something like this, so what is this vector? Um, this vector is going to be 1, 
minus 2. So basically it's in this direction. So if I ignore that, basically the set of all vectors that I take C1 times that are going to be anything along that line. So that's going to be multiplying by negative numbers, multiplying by positive numbers. So any vector along here I can write like that. If I look at this, what the heck is that? So that's going to be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That vector is on the same direction, and that's going to basically be anything along that same line. So if I take any linear combination of these two things, I'm basically going to be stuck with some vector along that line. I can never get anything that's over here. So this is basically the set of vectors that are uh, along this line. And note if I can do that, if I think of this as going head to tail, if I take uh, a negative number times that and get that, and then do the same thing here, and I uh, suppose I add, let's see, suppose I take minus C1, oops, sorry, C1 is minus 1, and C2 is 1 half. If I do that, I'll get the origin. I basically come straight back to where I started from. If I double this and then double the other one, notice I end up back at the same place. There's not a unique way for me to talk about a vector along that line and figure out a unique way to uh, express C1 and C2. Okay, that's it. Thank you.